there are very two important questions we'll be sharing the truth about on the Lagos Calabar Coastal Road. The first one is 15.2 trillion naira is the budget set aside for this coastal road, completed within eight years. Nigerians are asking, is this not a form of compensation for the Calabar people? Secondly, 75% of people lamenting on social media about the demolition are evils. Is this a means to get back on this tribe after the last election of 2023? And then totally, how can we position our investments along the coastal road? Those that we are affected, how we going to be compensated? And then can we see the layout where the coastal road will be passing in order for us to fall victim of buying properties exactly along the coastal road? I will addition to that only. I'm the consultants at World Homes and Properties. What we'll do is that we guide you and share with you the best real estate investment offer I can take advantage of here in Lagos, Nigeria. The Lagos Calabar Coastal Road is no longer a fresh news to most of us that are active on social media. We've seen this going viral and it's going to be going from Lagos, Lagos being the zero points and the eight points will be Calabar and also having about two extensions to two different northern states. And then the major goal is that within seven hours, we should be able to transport our goods from Lagos State and get to Calabar. It does a lot of economic factors that's going to be happening to the country when it's completed. I take the subdivision of Charlie Group and Charlie Group has a relationship with the president. So Nigerians are asking, is this not another means of siphoning funds by federal governments? And like some kind of question like that. So we're going to be answering for us in this video. When the minister of work, special of Minister Senator David Uma was interviewed and asked this question. It was like he didn't even know that the relationship between Mr. President and Charlie Group. Me personally, I don't buy that. But he further gave some explanation regarding why the contract was being awarded to ITEC. And it was like when there was ocean surge in VI back then, it was in Lagos State, and ITEC was one that was able to solve that problem. And also went for that to say that building a coastal road, you know, for those that know what a coastal road is, a road that is being built along the coast and the coast is between the seashore and the land. And it was like building, because it's also an evil space engineer, you know, it, was, it was not sharing that building a coastal road, you can't use asphalt, like asphalt will be the best and then you have to use concrete. And it was like, I think it's very, very well experienced. It was not sharing the fact of what I think they did at Papa Shodi and also what they did along the deep sea ports with Dante Finari and it was like the best set of people that they could award the contract so there are a lot of people that have bid for it but looking at the track record, looking at the fact they can, they can build the what they've done previously and also that they can also source for the funding wisely so that was the reason why I take was being awarded the contract so all the news about them being the division of Chadwick, Mr. President is trying to siphon phones and those kind of things it was like it was usually based on competence and technical capability of the company that was they were literally awarded the contract for. We know that Nigeria doesn't see how phones are going underground literally. So a very brief details of how large and how expanded with the coastal would be. It was meant to be 100 meters initially, but it was reduced 50 meters. I'm talking about that when I'm talking about the demolition why it was reduced. And it's going to be having two trains, one going, one coming in between five lanes on each road. So it's going to be a 10 lane road with two train tracks in between each of five lanes road on left and right hand side. The coastal road is being divided into three different sections. The first one is from VI down to Lagos Deep Sea Ports, which we're already, we're already working on the trialy. And from Undo, past the Deep Sea Ports, and then from Calabar. About to acquire but those are the three sections of the coastal road. And the project was being total cost should be around 50.3 trillion. And that was what Minister Senator David Uma said. And it was like it is not fixed, it could go up, it could come down, depending on what they meet on sites. And then it was about the funding, it was like it's going to be a joint, like a JV kind of partnership between FG and and ITEC who are going to be made during the major source of funding so FG will pay literally about 15-30 percent why I think will be the ones to do the rest of the funding and then talking about the ROI it was like when it is completed how will FG 
and I take me the money back. It was not like let's assume for instance each car that is passing through each of the two gates is spending about 3k or 15 or let's say 5,000 naira. And then imagine that amount of cars, and then let's assume we have 50,000 50, 50, cars per day using the coastal road. Because that's what I said that the coastal road is passed through the deep seaports, down to the refinery. And then that bridge deck is literally becoming a commercial on its own. So people coming from the east, all these issues of bandits along other parts of Lagos State, where you can have a very clear road, free road, CCTV camera, road secured, having navy under the water, having some military spots along the road on the main road, having fully secured road. So it's going to become a place where it's going to be like the best option for everybody to use. So looking at that kind of project or the post in place, how safe it's going to be. So people will be left on that choice and this is the coastal road. So talking about it, about it was it was, it was everything was uh everything was connected that at least it's not size than one of fifteen million era to two hundred million era per day when people are using the coastal road. That's from small cars which are probably like one five patrol gates and then the trucks will probably like five K or three thousand nine depending on what they're carrying for gang which are carrying and then by patrol gates by the time they're checking how many cars that will be on that too per day and they should be able to make their money back within a period of 15 years so it's going to be very good for entrepreneurs and then also the very fg and i tech should make their money back and they used to build that road that they should be making that 15.3 trillion naira back in the space of of 15 years secondly is this demolition is it tribalistic and are they trying to get back at the evils because of the result of the last election the person in charge of this project as minister of works himself is an evil man that's Senator David Omar. But we can see that most of the most audible voice of people complaining about demolition are evil people. I saw a video where they were lamenting and saying they bought land from the ballet, a man and his group of friends, businessmen in Lagos states, and everything is all gone for the coastal road. And also the one that went by most that's the person of Paul and Newbury, the CEO of Landmark Africa, complaining about the fact that he has invested over $250 million dollars building the landmark in Africa where we have the beach, the towers and everything and the people are just saying that they're getting evil people trying to make it look very very tribalistic and then the fact that Paul will say that initially the coast was not meant to affect landmark or landmark beach it was meant to pass along that water corporation for those that are familiar with VI so it was actually caused a lot of lot of problems and trouble online and then David Umar was like he has to go and meet Landmark CEO, they sat down, they talk, and they even laughed when they were done talking. That was him, he said. So now let's look at it. Initially, it was meant to be a 100 meters road, and then they had to compress it to about 50 meters literally. Now, that's why I avoid demolition structures so that they will not affect all the buildings that Landmark and every other beach along the Aziz Road. So that, so literally, this now will be affected is their their beach their waterfront and then landmark was the one like the beach is where people come and visit this project our tours our malls one of the reasons people come and visit is because of the beach we also are passing the beach and everything and that's another the beach will have to be doing because of the coastal road and they're like there's nothing you can do about that and the minister works with like that cannot be changed because the coastal road and then if you leave if you move the roads from the coast there's nothing you can do again it's no longer it can't be called the coastal road anymore so it was like they are going to stick to that plan. It's just that they will not affect any solid structures like landmark towers, um, the landmark mall, and every other building project along that via this will not be demolished. But it's going to be passing through the shoreline. That was the first thing they gave them that the beach is going to go. But the structures will be standing very, 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 very tall. The second point leads us to our final part. That's the third part about competition plan. So people that were affected, there was a competition plan that FG has for these people. Senator David Duman was like, people compensated according to the law of the land. That means if you don't have a building approval, you sell documents and every other document necessary to show that you don't have that land or that property. According to the law of the land, you don't own property literally. That's what I do, I ask my client. After I bought a property, go to um, Alausa, go to Land Bureau, perfect the title in your name and you have been approved before you start building so that in case of anything in the future, you're going to be duly compensated. But it was more like FG will be lenient on people. So you have been demolished, you're going to be getting something. Even though, you know, FG compensation might not really be as solid as actual value. But it was like people will be compensated to just compensate them for the purpose of their business. Because if you go and check 
Jack Conde and if people do an overall on the shoreline, they're going to be seeing houses being demolished. And then all of that demolition happened at Jack Conde, and the second demolition will still be happening, going straight down to the likes of Odeomi, passing through Odeomi, and then even when they land in the Bajdeki in down the I think it's just gonna check half hour with your land. And then let me add this here. If you only land in the Bajdeki after the support along the Odeomi side, I think it is time you can start perfecting your title very, very, very well. Or just forget about the property. Because you have to understand that this location is a uh, place where by FG and even foreign direct investment, they have a very, very high this in this location. So you to understand what you are going into. All those lands are above 500k, 300k, all those lands that we've already seen in 2017 or 2016 in the Bajdeki. You have to find a way to go and perfect your land title. And then most of you have to let's go to those lands because. But then I learned how much because the public status is actually give up on those lands, literally. And then one thing about Lagos government, Lagos government is about IS beta. So this place are still very, very scanty lands. And then people will see, even the, even the center was like, we're going to be having research along the coastal road. We're having filling station, we're going to be having each way so that people can just come, park their cars, relax, continue their journey. We're going to be having a lot of research along the coastal road. We're going to be having, we're going to be having, so even though themselves, they have plans. And people come and pass now with them to bring those plans to life, literally. So you have to understand that this is not just somewhere just go, um, just these are locations that even the government they are very, very high taste in this location. Just be very careful. And then for the proper way when you are buying lands or own lands along this ASICs. And then um with regards to how can we know exactly where we demolish, where what is the layout that has been laid out that the coastal is going to pass now. I added this link from James Duro, that's Duro Bond, that has a link to his video. He did a full drone coverage using a 3D view on the um, satellite map to explain exactly what will be affected from VI, National Hotel, the showing landmark bridge, showing the previous plan, the new plan, and where it's going to be taken. And also, know that I told you that okay, they're going to be sticking to the new plan because that was the minister of work said that they've already agreed with landmark and comes to the conclusion literally so i would advise you go and watch this video because it is much more well the, the link is here just go and watch the video it's much more well dated and then you also know about where exactly going to be affected so that you don't end up buying up buying the land where or buying the house where it's going to be demolished in the next future so that's very very careful and they know exactly where to avoid and where not to avoid the try and the other that that okay gd how can we invest this location now Investing along the coastal road is very, very, very good. Very, very, very. Let me let me play this video, short video. When we came that time and tell people a coastal road is going to pass in between the estates, from the layout, if you look at our layout, it was deliberate. We left a portion for the coastal road, and people, even those that were old or older in the industry, they were like, hey, "Mr. Hassan, you are wasting land. Just allocate everything because this coastal road may not come." In the next 20 years or it may never come but you can see as providence will have it now we are here look at the coastal road is here so assuming we've allocated this uh, portion to some people there will be problems so that's why we're always advocates of doing the right thing because if you do the wrong thing it's just a matter of time that you come out and people will see that you weren't honest you can see the coastal road is coming. So, ladies and gentlemen, I congratulate you, those that are subscribing to the estates, and uh, uh, thank you, thank you so much, thank you so much. We appreciate. And this developer was explaining how they avoided falling from the demolition because they were literally aware of the position properly. So you can buy this kind of estates. I also have to understand that me personally. If I have about, let's say, 300 m, 500 m, um, let's say, even 150 m or 30 m, literally, you have to find projects that are well titled, perfectly titled, and you're sure that they're going to be, and then they're going to be very, very highly secured, and they start owning lands along this coastal road, along this coastal road, along the ASIC, well titled lands, they're not cheap. The only land that's in about 5 a.m., forget about it. I'm talking about genuine lands you can buy along the labels. Is this the perfect time to be invested? And then, just make sure that you're going through the right source, do your location properly, and start position along these neighborhoods. Forget about what anybody is saying, but we have to see that it's not about you being scared or not being scared, it's about you doing it in the right way, literally. There are lands 
they are that are well perfected, well tight suit, highly secured, and not even affected by the coastal. Just like obviously you can start investing in soon. Don't just move um ignorantly, start, start completely, start lamenting, do it the right tool, get the right title, get the right projects, good, very nice building projects. There's going to be demand here. Take it or leave it. A period of about fifteen point three trillion naira. Even LG themselves are planning on positioning investment that import. Well, one more talk less of you actually know that investment over there. So even me personally, I've been subsidizing that imports. Um, own some stuff, going to own more stores, and she also considered owning some investments in that import. So, so I think that will be all I have to share with us. I'm the additions at Dekunde. I'm the consultant at Waterms and Props. You can also reach out to us for your consultancy advice on number on your screen. Can you subscribe to our channel? Bye for now, guys. Cheers to greatness.